Welcome back everyone. In this video, I wanted to give you guys an introduction to package management. Package management refers to the ability to install packages, which essentially is just another way of saying installing applications. Now packages can include other things such as libraries, which I'm not gonna to get too far into, but in this video, I'm going to show you how to install packages, remove packages, and also update the packages on your system. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So here on my laptop, there's several commands I'm going to give you to show you how to manage packages. But the first thing we need is actually to update our repository index. So what do I mean by that? On pretty much every Linux distribution, or at least most of them, you have the concept of repositories. A repository is an online server that contains one or more packages. Most of the time, your distribution of choice will have a main repository where everything comes from, and then you have other repositories that will basically contain other packages. We're not gonna get too far into repositories in this video. I'll save that for a different video. Now, we're going to be using the apt, spelled A-P-T, series of commands in this video but it's important to note that these commands are all specific to Debian and Ubuntu and distributions that are based on Debian and Ubuntu. So if you're running something like Fedora, OpenSUSE, Arch Linux, or any of the, anything like that, anything that's not Debian or Ubuntu or based on Debian or Ubuntu, this command will not work because you need to be running a distribution that supports the apt series of commands and each distribution has its own package management utility. So I just wanted to give you guys that disclaimer. But it's important to understand that the concept of package management is meaning that your packages come from an online source similar to an app store on a mobile platform. You have one central place to go to get packages from, but you do need to make sure that your package index locally is synchronized with the servers externally so that way you do have a listing of all the re you know recent packages. So to do that, you're gonna run sudo apt update. Now even though that says update, that's not actually going to update packages, that's simply going to update your repository. So I'll press enter. Now, we can see that it did, in fact, do something, but what exactly did it do? Now, here we have a list of servers that it basically reached out to to download the indexes from. Some of these come from Ubuntu themselves. For example, this one right here. This URL is an online repository that actually comes straight from Ubuntu, and we can see that it's for the Disco Dingo release in my case but that's one of the repositories. But we can also see repositories that don't come from Ubuntu. For example, Google Chrome is not actually offered in Ubuntu's repository. So I had to install this repository right here, which is third party, in order to facilitate the installation of Google Chrome. So on your side, you'll probably not see as many repositories as I have here. I even have one for KeePass XC, which is my password manager. This is you know, my laptop, so of course I'm going to have graphical programs here and workstation programs you wouldn't normally see in a server. But anyway, we can see that the command was Successful, it says reading package lists, so it basically read all of the contents of these repositories. It then rebuilt the dependency tree and state information, and it also gives me a helpful message down here that says 59 packages can be upgraded. So I'll get into that in a moment, but right now we already know now how to update our index. So now that we've updated the package index, what can we actually do with that? So we can search for packages on the command line. So we can simply do apt search. And I don't need sudo in front here because I'm not actually going to be changing anything. I'm just simply searching the indexes to see what packages are available and I can give it a keyword. So for example, if I know that I want to install Firefox, if it's not already installed, I could just simply search for Firefox press enter, and then it's gonna give me a list of results here. So obviously it's gonna give me basically any 
package that includes Firefox in the name or description. So there's going to be quite a bit here. But you can just basically scroll up here and we can start seeing the actual Firefox packages. We have the locales for different languages, which um, is not what we're interested in. So yeah, maybe this is a bad example. There's quite a few results here. But you can see that we were able to search for Firefox and actually here it is. We see the name of the package and it gives us a little descriptive text here for that. So I'll go ahead and just uh, clear the screen. Okay, so to install a package, we do need to use sudo because we are gonna make changes to the overall system. We're going to use apt and the keyword install because we want to install something. And then we can give it the name of a package. And we were able to use the apt search command to get package names. And I know that one that I want installed on my system is Vim Knox. That's my preferred Vim editor. So I'll press enter here. And we can see that the following new packages will be installed, Vim Knox. And we can also see from the output that zero packages will be upgraded, one newly installed package, no packages need to be removed, and we still have 59 packages that need to be upgraded but are not included in this transaction. And from the output is telling us, and it kind of went fast because we only had one package, so it just went ahead and did it, but it's telling me how much disk space will be used after this is done. And then we see here that it downloaded it from this repository right here. So we know where the package is going to be coming from. We have the package name. It's a 64-bit package and so on. So it fetched the package and then it unpacked it and then it set it up. So essentially it installed. So of course I do have that command on my system. I already had it before, but again, which Vim will show me where that binary is. I actually removed that package just to show you guys the process of installing it. So now what I'll do is give you a more practical example. I'm going to install Apache. Apache is a popular web server. It's basically used all over the internet. I bet you use it every single day without even realizing it because it powers a lot of websites out there. So to install Apache, we're gonna do sudo apt install apache2 and I know that's the name of the package because I've done this before but you would use apt search to search through the packages if you didn't know the exact name of what you wanted to install I'll press enter and you know at this point it's pausing it's not actually installing anything it's actually asking us to confirm what it's planning on doing here so let's walk through this so we understand what exactly this command is wanting to do. So we asked for just one package, that only just that one thing. We could have included other packages by separating them with a space. We can have as many as we want in one line, but we only asked for one, Apache 2. But here it's telling me it's actually going to be installing quite a few packages. So what's up with that? The apt command is smart enough to know that if a package requires the installation of other packages, it's going to go ahead and install those. So these packages that you see right here are actually required for Apache to work. So apt is going to go ahead and install those for us. So that way we don't have a dependency requirement that's not fulfilled. It gives us some suggested packages here. These are packages that are deemed to provide extra features or something to the package we want to install, but it's not actually going to install those for us. It's just saying, hey, you know, by the way, these packages are recommended. Just make a note of that. And then here, it's going to combine the packages here with anything that we asked for in the command into one to show us all the packages that it's going to install in this transaction. So basically it's telling me zero are going to be upgraded it's going to need to install eight packages total. And again, it doesn't need to remove anything. And 59, not upgraded. Now pay special attention to this. Every single time you install packages, that's very, very important. If you have a package that requires something else to be removed, you might see a number of packages here. And then you might see another section telling you packages that are going to be removed. So if you're not expecting anything to be removed, you might not want to say yes, because by default, if you press enter, because the Y is capital, it defaults to yes, but you have a chance here to do N for no to cancel out of this if this is not something that you'd like to do. So I do want to install Apache though, so I'll press enter to accept the default. 
It's going to go ahead and install. And there you go, it went ahead and installed Apache. I'll clear the screen. So what does Apache do for us? I mentioned that a lot of websites out there use it as their web server. So we know that it serves a web page. And it's a simple example because simply installing it actually gives us a web server already. So what I'm gonna do now is open up a web browser. And here you'll just type in the IP address of your actual Linux instance. So maybe it could be something like 192.168.1.123, just, just a random number I came up with. That's a very popular IP scheme. But in this case, I have Apache installed locally, so all I need to do is do localhost, just like that, and press enter. And you can see that I have an Apache web page. So essentially, even though I just installed one package, I'm actually serving a web page. This is a default web page you get with Apache when you install it. I'm not going to give you guys a full tutorial of Apache in this video, but I just want you to know that this is the default file that it serves. And if you want to serve your own website, you simply replace this with whatever one you want to uh, serve instead. And then you can simply serve a website. And if you have this instance on a cloud instance or something like that, well, know that you have a public facing web server right now. So if that's not what you wanted, we should probably remove the package. In fact, why don't we go ahead and do that right now? So that way I show you exactly how to remove a package. So I'm gonna remove Apache, so I'll do sudo apt remove, and then the name of the package we want to remove, which in this case is Apache 2. So if I press enter, let's see what it wants to do. So it's telling me that there's some packages that were automatically installed and no longer required. So I'll get into that in just a moment, but basically all it's gonna do right now is do what I asked it to do, which is remove Apache 2. So I'll press enter, and it's gonna go ahead and remove Apache 2. So what about these packages right here? These, if you recall, are the packages that apt installed in order to satisfy the requirements of Apache. But now Apache's gone, we removed it, and it's basically telling us that, well, since you want to remove Apache 2, because notice that it told us this before we actually removed it, it's telling us basically that once this transaction is complete, then these packages here are no longer required because the only reason why they were installed in the first place is because Apache required them and now that Apache has gone, we don't need that. So how do we get rid of those? So actually what we do is we'll do sudo apt auto remove, just like that. I'll press enter. And this is how you clean up your packages. If you've had you know, several packages that you've installed and then later removed, then this gives you a chance to clean those up. And again, it's sudo apt auto remove. And we can see here it wants to remove these packages. Now be very careful here because it's possible if there's any bugs or anything in the package database that it might remove something that you wouldn't want it to remove. So just make sure that all of these make sense in my case, I know that these are indeed the packages that need to be removed, and I'm okay with this. So I'll just accept the default by pressing enter. Otherwise, you would just do N, enter for no, if you didn't want to do this, but I'll go ahead and press enter. And it's gonna go ahead and remove those packages. So now we have packages that need to be updated. And this is important because on a Linux system, you wanna make sure your packages are always up to date because you know, sometimes, yeah, you'll get new features and that's not all that important. It's nice to have new features. But more importantly, though, these packages will often have security updates included and they'll fix actual security flaws. Just recently, there was a flaw in Vim of all things. So it's definitely important that you keep up to date on your packages. So here's how you go ahead and do that. The first thing you want to do is sudo apt update. We've already done that in the same video just a few moments ago. We don't need to do it again, but you do wanna make it a habit of every time you're about to do, run your updates that you do this first. So I'll press enter. And again, this is just simply updating the package index, which really wasn't necessary because I highly doubt something changed in 10 minutes. So, But it's just good to get into that habit like I mentioned. So now that we know that the repository index is up to date, we can do sudo apt upgrade. And what that's going to do is actually update packages. So I'll press enter. And we can see here that there's quite a few packages that need to be updated. 
in my case, it's going to update Firefox. And Firefox is installed because, you know, this is a laptop. So, it's, of course, it's going to have a web browser. But that just goes to show you that it updates applications as well. And Firefox is actually extremely important because there was a security vulnerability recently that's actually pretty nasty. So they've already patched it and we definitely want to have the latest Firefox on our system. So that way we can go ahead and uh, do that. But I'm going to say no for now and not update packages and clear the screen because I want to give you guys another command. The one we just ran was this one, sudo apt upgrade, but there's also dist or dist upgrade. So what's the difference? So Pop! OS, which is the distribution I'm on, I think has some customization here, so it might not look exactly the same for you. But essentially what Upgrade will do is it'll update any packages on your system that don't require something to be removed or something else installed as a prerequisite. It only does a one for one. And that's important to know because maybe you want to start with this and just update everything here from Upgrade and then you can use dist upgrade later, which will run any updates regardless of whether they require other packages to be newly installed or even packages to be removed. Upgrade is just a bit safer. After you run upgrade, you can run dist upgrade. So I'll press enter. And essentially it's going to be the same exact thing because nothing needed to be removed and nothing needed to be zero, you know, newly installed. You see right here, newly installed zero zero to remove. So the thing is, if we were running dist upgrade, it would also process the newly installed. It would also process the ones that need to be removed. So that's the difference between them. You first run upgrade and then dist upgrade. So I'll press enter. Go ahead and let these install. Okay, we can see now that the updates are complete. Now it's going to probably look different for you than it does for me because everything you see down here below is output from Pop! OS, which they customize things a little bit here. So you might not see that, but the general idea is the same. We ran the sudo apt upgrade command and that updated packages. And again, what we'd want to run next is sudo apt dist upgrade to basically update anything else that the first command didn't do, but this isn't going to do anything for us because there really wasn't anything before that needed to be removed and there wasn't anything that needed to be newly installed. So there's really nothing for dist upgrade to do. Now, if you went ahead and ran the updates and it mentioned that there's kernel updates, you probably should reboot the system, which would be sudo reboot. And that's what you would do to reboot your machine to take advantage of the security updates, which is recommended. Of course, there's ways around that. This is Linux, we don't have to reboot. There's ways to make it so that way you can still take advantage of the security updates without rebooting, but I'm not going to get into that. If you don't know those tricks and techniques, then you would just simply reboot your machine, which would uh, definitely make sure you take advantage of that. But there is something called live patching, and you could feel free to look that up if you're interested. That allows you to basically ensure you have the latest security updates without actually needing to reboot. So there you go. That was your overview on package management. Again, the commands we used in this video were Ubuntu and Debian specific. We used the apt utility. But even in other distributions, the concept is basically the same. You have a package manager and it connects to repositories and it installs packages and most of them handle dependencies for you. So that way you aren't required to take care of that yourself. So I hope that was helpful for you guys. Stay tuned. I will have new videos in this series uploaded very soon. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching my video. I really appreciate it. If you want to help me out, make sure you check out the description below this video where you'll find links to my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server, second edition, as well as my Patreon page. If you like this video, be sure to click that like button and share it on Twitter or any other social media network. And be sure to subscribe so you'll be the first to see my latest videos as they're uploaded. Thanks again.